Hey there, it's Elizabeth and welcome back to another Ramble Session. I hope y'all are doing well and I hope y'all had a great weekend. We, um, we actually went down south this weekend. We hadn't been down, oh, in a couple weeks. And so yeah, we had a nice relaxing weekend. The kids stayed home um, and they kept the pups. So yeah, it's always nice when they keep the pups because then I don't have to worry about taking them out and feeding them and all that kind of stuff. So it was a very nice, quick, but nice relaxing weekend. So let's see what's going on here. I've got a lot to share today, so I hope this isn't too long, but um, yeah. So on the Fobonichi front, I am, ta-da, behind. <laughs> um, excuse me, here's Fred, jeez Louise. <clears throat> I'm so sorry, gosh. Um, okay, so today is Monday the 16th, okay? And what ends up happening to me, and I know I've said it before, is that I do not generally come into my craft room on the weekends. Um, mainly because a lot of the times I'm not home, I'm down south, and I don't have a craft room down there. I do take an art bag, but it's getting smaller and smaller, uh, you know, as the months go by because the time on the weekends I reserve for my husband. So unless, you know, I'm crocheting while we're watching something on TV or something like that, I really just don't want to take that time away from my husband. So yeah, I usually don't work on my stuff on the weekends. So I'm usually caught up until Thursday and then on Mondays, like today, I have to go back and catch up on the weekend pages. So that's how that's going. Um, yeah, so this morning I'm just sitting here decorating some of my pages. We did not buy a boat. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll journal about that later. We did actually go out looking at some boats, but no dice there, which is fine by me. You know, it'll happen when it happens. If you don't know, if you're new to the channel, our boat sunk back in February because our concrete dock decided to collapse. So yeah, going through all that, but my husband, you know, we're, we're just looking right now. Um, I'm sure the right opportunity will present itself at some point, but he certainly is missing his boat. So, um, Anywho, so this, let me show you what this is all about. Okay, so that's what's up on the Fobonichi front. Okay, so today I'm going to be working on these pages, uh, what I did on Friday, what we did on Saturday, Sunday, I pretty much crocheted and I'll show you that in a bit. Um, so let's start with that, whoops, with that other thing that I showed you. This is what I have been working on for my daughter. I think I've shown you this before. I added, these are sunflowers. If you know, I don't know if you can't tell. <laughs> I've, I've, I haven't done anything like this before. Like I've done, okay, let me start over. This is a graduation cap topper for my daughter. And I mentioned it in the last ramble session, probably. What we do with these here, where we're from, uh, it is a thing on graduation. My daughter's graduating university in a few weeks and this will get tacked onto, like glued onto, tacked onto, whatever, the top of her graduation cap so that when we're in the audience at the auditorium looking down, all you see is a sea of these graduation caps. So this is what we will see. So we will know exactly where she's at down there amongst the throngs of people that are graduating with her. So yeah, she picked the design of the sunflowers off of Pinterest and she also picked her own uh, quote. And so I simply hand lettered it. This is not brush lettering. I did this in Posca pen. It's just uh, a matter of thickening the downstrokes. So that's what I did. And it's in white Posca pen now, but I will take, I think I showed you this before as well, but um, I'm going to take one of these thin glue pens and put all of this lettering into gold glitter, okay? 
So that's how this is working out. And I still have, you know, obviously a lot more to do. So I'm working on that and I have to get it done by this weekend because we are going to be taking her graduation pictures. So it needs to be done. So there's that. Now, while I have you here as well, I am in the midst of gluing my pages, okay, for my next book, which would be what, what, I don't even know what month we're in. April? Yeah. January, February, March, April. May, June. So this is going to be my May, June book, okay? I just wanted to show you this hopefully briefly because I'm right in the middle of gluing the pages together, okay? And I had a question about the mathematical aspect of gluing my pages together. I am certainly not a math whiz. That is uh, part of the reason I choose to spend my time journaling instead of building rockets. So <laughs> each of these books, this is a Staples brand gridded notebook, okay? It has 100 sheets of paper, which means there are, uh, let me see here. Hello, let's get to a single page. Okay, there are 100 of these pages, which has um, two, or 100 of these sheets, which has two pages on it, okay? So I hope I make sense when I say this. When you glue your three pages together, you will come up with 33 sets, 33 plus one sheet sets of two sets of those, of pages, okay, that look like this, that are nice and thick and they have three pages, okay? Here's the center of the book where the spine is. Now, what I noticed yesterday is by accident, I have these two extra pages. Like I had glued these together to make a bundle of three. Then I have these two spare pages hanging out. I don't know what they were doing. And then I had these which are glued together three, okay? So yeah, sometimes I'm human and I make a mistake and I forget a page here or there, okay? But I usually start at the beginning and I do have an entire series on how I do my books, okay? I will try to link that below. Uh, generally on this page here, I do a cover sheet, like a piece of scrapbook paper. On this page here, I generally do my pocket that holds my labels and then I start my month here. So what I'll do is in pencil, I will go through and however many uh, days there are in May, let me think, I think they're 31 in May, um, I will go ahead and pencil in, you know, 31, okay, till I get back here to the center of the book. Now, generally, I'll have a page or two left over in the center of the book, and that's where then I will put possibly another cover sheet for the month of June, my pocket over here, and then I will start here with June 1st, and then I will go all the way you know, gluing my pages in this section here to do my June book, okay? So I hope that made sense. Each book holds two months, all right? And I just, again, you know, I start at the beginning and I just start gluing three pages together on the left-hand side. When I get to the center of the book, I then go to the back of the book and I start gluing my one, two, three page groupings together going this way because that's the natural, that's the way the book lays naturally, okay? So I hope I answered your question and how, you know, to go about doing it. Um, it. It is fairly easy. I just start gluing, okay? And then when I'm done, I go to the front. I lightly number and pencil all the pages of that month, see where I'm at in the center of the book, I go, then I go to the back of the book and I number those pages for the second month of the book. And, and then at that point, I find out how many extra pages I have. Sometimes I have two extra pages. Sometimes I could have five extra pages. And if I've made mistakes in the middle and forgot to glue a page, it just gets glued onto the next set of pages. So I could have, like in this book here, I have um, one of these. Yeah, right here. This is only two pages. So I'm going to have an extra page. And so, yeah, sometimes I have a group of four pages glued together because I misglued or I misglued and only have two pages to glue together. At any rate, 
it has always worked out for me. This is my fourth year doing it. I just start gluing three pages together. <laughs> and in the end, I come up with something that looks like this, okay? So two months fit into the book. Now let's see with this one really quickly, okay? See what I mean? And you've seen these a hundred times. So this is the front of the book, scrapbook paper pocket. This is, this feels like two sheets of paper glued together, but it could be three, I don't know. And then I just start here, okay? I hope you can see that. Okay, and then I just go from there, okay? And now in this book, let's see here. Uh, let me get to the center. Okay, there were 31 days in March, okay? So I had an extra page here. I simply covered it up with a pretty spring looking collage, okay? That's what I do with my extra pages. Then here is my April section of the book, scrapbook paper over here, pocket for my labels, and I start my April, the next month, April 1st on the left-hand side of the page, and I go from there, okay? Now, at the end of this book, let's get to the end, and I do predate my pages. Okay, it gives me a little kick in the pants to make sure I get something on every page. So at the end of this book, when I finished um, numbering all the months, April has 30 days, okay? So I actually have an extra page, all right? No biggie, I can do one of three things, right? I can choose to leave it blank, that's A-OK. -okay. Uh, I can do a collage on it. Or what I will probably do on this one because it's at the end of my book is do my shout out series. So I'll do my shout outs on this page. Okay. So two months plus two extra pages, you know, fit in. And then I also consider these extra pages too, right? Because they're just my pocket pages. So there you have it. I hope that made some sense. Okay. And you know what? I mean, I'd have to like go through the book and you know, see, but I am fairly certain, knock wood, that I have not had a bed day in this entire book. I really don't think I have. I see no pictures of beds. We've had couch days, but those are different. Yeah, no, I don't think, no pictures of beds so far. Oh my gosh, that's like amazing. Okay, I think that's the first time that's ever happened in the four years I've been doing this. Okay, so let's move on. What else have I been doing? Okay, these, I worked on these and I'll bring them up closer to you. Hopefully it's focusing and there's not a lot of glare. Um, these are just simply tags, okay? And these are called clusters. And I learned how to do the clusters from Jessica Rapp. Uh, so I will leave her link below and she's super fun to watch. So there's one of them. Here's another one, okay? And here is another one. Now, all I simply used on these was the the base itself is just a piece of card, that's it. And then these are just things I found in my stash. This is uh, this stuff, cheesecloth, right? So it, this right here, this is cheesecloth that I just stamped. Uh, I colored it by just stamping my archival ink pad over it. These right here, this little doll, paper doll, is from this. Hope there's not a glare. It's from the Tim Holtz paper doll collection, the ideology. I love these things. And I never really, um, you know, purchased stuff like that. But I happened to be in Michael's because I had to get more glue pens for my daughter's cap. And I happened to run across them. Across them. They were $5.99 a pack, I think, okay? Which, to me personally, is a bargain, okay? There are, in this pack, let me show you. In this pack here of the paper dolls, they're like vintage -y paper dolls. 107 pieces, right? I mean, to me, it's worth it. And I don't, I find Tim Holtz stuff to be fairly expensive, so I don't really have a lot of Tim Holtz stuff. <laughs> but, um, but those I do like. And then I also got this one here, which was the botanical ephemera, okay? So I'm loving those to work on these little clusters here. And then what I did over the weekend, sorry, there's the chair. What I did over the weekend 
is I went through my scrap drawer. Okay, here's my scrap paper drawer. And I took all of my card, like a uh, cardstock, white, black, uh, whatever color it was, and I made them into little tags because I'm gonna do a bunch of clusters or just a bunch of tags, just whatever. So I had just all these pages uh, of cardstock in here. So I just cut them all up and I'm gonna make something out of them for journals. And then I put the rest of my stuff, like this is all my colorful scrapbook paper held together. Please refrain Jackson from doing that. Jackson. Oh, well, he's just digging to China. He's not gonna get there. He just hasn't realized it yet. And then this, these are like my painty scraps, okay? So yeah, I just put all my scraps together, cut my little cards out. So when I feel like doing that, I'm all set and ready to go. Um, let me see what else. Oh, I was going to mention to you guys too. All right. Because I did not use eyelets on this. Okay. But I'm looking at this card here, which I got from a dear friend of mine in a piece of happy mail. Now look at that. Okay. That's not normal. I don't think, um, if it is, it's ugly and it just should not look that way. Yeah. I'm having an issue. And this is actually an eyelet from We Are Memory Memory Keepers. Okay. As most of you know, I got this wonderful tool and it is from We Are Memory Keepers. And, um, I got it back with like Christmas money. Sorry for the chair. Now I have not yet been able, and where's my little scrap here. I have literally not been able to punch an eyelet properly to save my life, okay? Now, using that little piece or this tool, right, is not rocket science, okay? But these are how my eyelets come out. Like, they're, something's not right, okay? That one's sort of okay, but it's like, my gosh, you would cut yourself on that thing. I can't. I can't put an eyelid in something and give it to somebody but that they might cut themselves on. These two, I think I was experimenting with the different settings because, and then I had put on um, my Facebook, right, that I was having issues with it. And, and I have since the very beginning. Like, I don't know if you can tell. Okay, there is a perfect example right there. Do you see these things right here? Okay, this top part right here and this part here. Is it me or are they not lined up? They're not centered, okay? I have the directions right here because I always keep my directions. I have read these things over and over and over again and I probably even tried to read them in every language that they have on here, um, but mainly focusing of course on the English. And I have everything properly put, uh, the cube chart, I have the settings correct for the eyelets that I have. I've used recollection eyelets and I've used We Are Memory Keeper eyelets and I am not able to eyelet my stuff because that appears to be off center. Let me know in the comments if you have one of these, if you have ever had a problem with this and keep in mind, I have read the directions I have it on the correct settings. I have watched numerous videos on how to use this contraption. Um, and yeah, I've done everything I know to do. Now, the last thing I'm gonna do is of course contact um, We Are Memory Keepers and let them know that there could possibly be some sort of manufacturer error or something, okay? Normally, in my case, it would be human error, but I mean, you can clearly see there, they are off center. So no wonder my eyelids are wonky. Ugh. I hope something can be done because, yeah, those little tools are not the cheapest thing in the world, you know? And I love my eyelids and I want to be able to, you know, make beautiful tags and, and use that contraption. Okay, so there's my vent for the day. I don't know. Hopefully, I'll be able to do something with it. Okay. Um, what else? What else? Let me see. Oh, let's go on to the crochet. Okay. 
Yeah, this is not a crochet channel. I just like sharing what I've done. <laughs> I am, I tell you all the time, like I'm fairly new to crochet, so, um, but I am having such a blast with it. This, sorry for the chair. This needs to be washed, okay? But let's see, how do I, okay. This is a lapkin for my beautiful grandmother, okay? And I did it using rum raisin, okay? yarn it is 80 percent acrylic 20 percent wool i learned that the hard way i'll get into that in a second uh it's a karen cake okay and it took about it took three whole cakes and some of another cake to just do the border okay and this is called granny stripe super easy to do uh, and I learned how to do it from Blossom Crochet on YouTube. I'll link her below. She's really um, easy to follow. And I also learned this uh, scallop edge from her as well. I love doing an edge. It just makes it look finished. And yeah, so this is a lap cam. And I'm going to give it to my grandma hopefully soon. And I had a lot of fun doing it. Uh, I didn't use a pattern. So... It's probably close to three feet wide by a little bit more than three feet long. So, yeah. So I hope she enjoys it. It still needs to be washed. Um, but yeah, that was, that was a lot of fun to do and to finish. And then I started, ah, I started on this here. Okay. Um, this is another, this is going to be another lapkin okay look at those beautiful colors oh, they're so pretty and this is going to be for my aunt who takes care of my grandma so look at those so pretty so pretty and this is again in the granny uh the granny stripe okay and if you're interested i don't know when i do my foundation chain at the bottom, the first chain, I use a slightly bigger hook. So this is a 5.7. This is a J hook. And then when I actually do the crocheting itself, I use an H hook or a 5 millimeter hook. Okay, so there's that. Now, here's where I found out that there is a difference in the Karen Cakes. Who knew? Oh my gosh. I really ought to just like do my research before I jump into doing something. Because, yeah, I realized that there's a difference. I started crocheting this this weekend. And I'm like, man, this is this uh, yarn is, like, really stiff and hard. And, like, what's going on? Because my grandma's lapgan, this one here, is just so soft. And it's just, it's soft, you know. It's very flexible. It's very soft. Very easy to work with. Okay. That yarn. Then, when I went back to my bands, because, you know, I learned you should always keep your bands, I learned, I'm like, what is the difference with this yarn? Like, what's going on? This thing is stiff as a board. Well, here's what I figured out, okay? This ball right here is a big cake, okay? Let's see, yeah. It's this, Yarn Inspirations Karen Big Cake, okay? And I have three of these. And you're supposed to use a, oh, it's a, a medium four. You're supposed to use a five millimeter crochet hook, so I'm doing all that properly. This is 100% acrylic, okay? Well, then when I went and looked at my Karen Cakes from the Rum Raisin, which is what I did my grandma's lap gain in, okay, I was reading on here, and this is 80% acrylic and 20% wool. That's the difference. You know, this is what happens when you just jump in with both feet and you don't know much about what you're doing, but you just want to do it, you know, and then you end up finding out the hard way, but that's okay. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll all work out. And so I'm going to do the same thing with my aunts. I'm, excuse me, Jackson, please stop, please. You're interrupting ever so rudely. I'm very sorry for my dog. So this one's going to be the same thing. It's going to be a lapkin. It's going to be a little bit longer because my aunt's a little bit taller. And it is just simply the granny stitch back and forth and back and forth. And that's what I like about it. Uh, like I said before, I pretty much just started, you know, not like just started. I mean, I started at the end of last year, probably around October-ish. 
and so far I've only completed one moment. Let me let him out of the, oh, or he's gonna drive me insane. Be free. All right, so, so far I have completed a an afghan for a girlfriend of mine in the moss linen stitch. I have, and I've completed my grandmother's lapgan. That's it. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me, there's Fred again. So yeah. Um yeah, I'm really enjoying the crocheting. It is so relaxing and it actually is something that I can do while I watch TV. So I do very much enjoy that. Or if I'm waiting in a waiting room, which I seem to be doing quite a lot lately. So, yeah, uh my husband goes in this week for some of his first uh treatments. And so we'll be at the hospital most of the day. And yeah, I'm gonna have to bring this along and I'll probably end up finishing it. <laughs> so yeah, uh, crochet is just a great hobby, you know, for on the go as well. Uh, you know, or if you're waiting somewhere or you just wanna do something with your hands, that's my issue. I need to be doing something with my hands. So, and it's just something you can just take on the go with you. You know, wherever you go, it can go. And so, yeah, I really have been enjoying it very much. So, anything else? Um, I don't think so. I think this is long enough. I've, I've kept you long enough. So, yeah. We will check back next week and see what's been going on then. So I hope you all have a great rest of your day and a wonderful rest of your week. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.